Are you convinced and determined that you can heal your FAI hip pain through exercise, but you just don't know where to start? If you can relate, then this video is perfect for you. We're going to go through an exercise routine that targets your hips and is perfect for beginners. Hey, I'm Max from Max Resnick Movement, your last stop for pain-free hips. If you're on this video, you've probably done a healthy amount of research on FAI, and you're likely convinced that surgery may not be the best approach for you. And although you like the idea of healing your hips through exercise, you may just not know where to start. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate what a beginner exercise routine targeting the hips can look like. We're going to target each of the six main hip movements, so pay attention to which exercise gives you trouble because that may give you some insight on why you may be experiencing discomfort in the hips. And if a certain exercise does give you a lot of trouble, you know that you should come back to it in future exercise sessions. So those are a few things to pay attention to, but I'm tired of talking, so let's get to moving. All right, so the first exercise we're going to do is pelvic tilt. So we're going to get on the ground and we're going to make sure our knees are aligned, our hips are aligned, our feet are pointing straight, and everything's nice and aligned. And from here, we're going to roll the pelvis into a posterior tilt and trying to engage the glutes and abs a little bit. And then we're going to go into an anterior tilt. We're arching the back more and trying to engage more of the hip flexors. We want to avoid what I just did where I lifted my hips off the ground. And I see many people do that when they first start working on these. So make sure you keep your butt and hips on the ground as you go through these pelvic tilts. Upper body is relaxed. You can place your hands on your pelvis and, or your glutes to make sure that you know, you're getting engagement, but you're also that you're aligned, right? This is a good way to pay attention to whether one hip may be higher than the other hip. Maybe you're more rotated than you would like. So, you know, you can, you can play around with this and adjust if necessary. If that gets easier, you can go on all fours here. And for pure beginners, laying on starting on the ground is better. But once you get a little bit better, you can certainly start going on all fours, which allows you to get some more range of motion. But the same things apply, right? We want to arch the low back and engage those hip flexors in anterior tilt, and then round the low back, engage the glutes when we're going into posterior tilt. And just going back and forth and mobilizing this and getting a mobile pelvis is huge for people experiencing hip discomfort and these really help mobilize the pelvis. The next exercise is the supine hip lifts and on this we're targeting hip flexion. Right? So we're going to do a minute on each side and the goal here is to use nothing but your hip flexors to raise your legs into the air. So after each rep, you really relax the body, put everything down to rest and then you're going to engage or try to engage the quad, the hip flexors and all the muscles that help your leg go into hip flexion. Notice if your abs try to help you or your upper body tries to do something. We want to keep everything really relaxed except the muscles responsible for hip flexion. So after about a minute, you should be able to start getting a nice little contraction in that area. And for those that really don't have good hip flexion, that area might finally start feeling engaged for the first time in a very long time. And now we're going to move on to the other side and same thing, right? As you can see, my left side, as I lift my right hip, my left side is staying super relaxed, just like my upper body and the rest of my body. And 
and this may not seem like much in the beginning but I promise you if you do a few sets of this and you know if you don't feel much after a minute feel free to go even more just to really pay attention to what you're trying to experience and for some it this may not be difficult especially if you have pretty good hip flexion and it's not a weak movement pattern for you but the only way to find out is to really go through this and give your body a chance to figure it out Next up, we're working hip extension with the kneeling hip extension clinic exercise. And from here, we're really trying to tuck the pelvis to exaggerate hip extension, right? And every time we do so, you can put your hands like I'm doing here on your pelvis. And every time we tuck that pelvis, we're trying to get a glute contraction as well as a stretch in the front of the thigh. For some people, it will be high, kind of near the psoas and abdomen for others it will be lower in the quads and that's all fine whatever your body needs it will experience and send you that message right so just going through each of these tilts and holding that tilt at the end range whatever the end range is for you for five to ten seconds and if you want you can start dipping a little bit deeper into hip extension you just don't want to do it if you have to untuck right don't sacrifice the tuck in order to get depth and from the front view here i'm showing this because it's important to make sure you are aligned right that your hips are pointing straight your knees pointing both knees are pointing straight you don't want your knee doing something funky like pointing outward or way inward but it's more common to be out like i was there so just really make sure you're set up in alignment knees are hip width apart your feet are pointing straight your knees are pointing straight and everything looks good what happens to a lot of people is when they're in this position and they start tucking you may be aligned and in a good position at first but once you start going deeper into hip extension the body starts doing weird things the shoulders start doing something weird the knee starts kicking out the hips try to rotate so don't sacrifice function for depth right make sure you keep good alignment throughout the exercise next up is the hip twist stretch so you're gonna put your ankle on top of your knee and then you're going to rotate out to the opposite side like I'm doing here and this is gonna stretch out those lateral hip muscles and really help open up hip abduction and hip external rotation. When I first started doing this one, it really helped me open things up in those lateral hip muscles. And for a lot of us, we put a lot of our tension and body weight to the outside of our hips, especially if we walk with our feet out and we don't really keep our legs really aligned and inward throughout the day. So another important thing here is to breathe really breathe and allow the hip to slowly rotate out and open up all those muscles in the lateral side of your hip for you trying to keep that knee as straight as possible as you notice my knees maybe not completely vertical but that's okay in the beginning especially if that area is a little bit restricted for you now doing the other side ankle going on the knee again we're going to push that knee down before we rotate and then we slowly rotate out to the opposite side I had to set my clock there for a second my bad <laughs> So now that we're down here, notice how my arms are just relaxed and trying to trying to keep those arms as aligned as possible. And I'm looking in the opposite direction to kind of encourage that spine to detach from that hip a little bit, to really get rotation from the hip and keeping that knee vertical and pointing up. For some people, this might be really intense and the stretches really dramatic right and if it is then you know that this is going to be an important exercise for you so we're just paying attention for now we're, not, we're observing we're not making any grandiose um you know determinations but we are if if you're feeling something substantial here that's important to note and it's important that you come back to it um in your next exercise routine
The next exercise is going to be wall hip rotations and we're going to work both external and internal rotation here. And as I'm doing here, the feet are about hip width apart. We're getting as much external rotation as we can, like I'm doing here. And then we're bringing it back and having the knees tap for internal rotation. Pay attention to what your pelvis is doing. Make sure it's not rotated in a weird way. Make sure you're not overly arching the back or overly tucking. You wanna keep the pelvis neutral. Another thing you wanna pay attention to is that you're getting an equal amount of rotation on both hips, right? You don't wanna take a lot more rotation on the right and less rotation on the left, whether that's external or internal. Try to keep it balanced. And if it's not, don't try to change it like crazy, but just again, observe and pay attention. So I love this exercise and I usually do this two to three, four minutes. We're only gonna do it for a minute here, but again, stay with this for longer if you'd like. And from here, we're gonna bring our legs together and we're gonna work on hip adduction here. And we're going to squeeze the knees and ankles together and really isometrically contract those inner thigh muscles. Many people are weak in this movement pattern and it's really hard, it took me a long time to find a good beginner level exercise to target this movement pattern. So. If you're weak here and, and you know, if, if we're gonna hold this for about two minutes here. So if you feel like those muscles are getting really tired and really fatigued, just know that you're in the majority, right? So, um, but you will know that again, something that you wanna focus on in future exercise routines. So really pay attention here. How tired do those inner thigh muscles get? And if it gets pretty, challenging and really difficult, you know that you should really target a deduction in your training. And one way to make this more difficult and also target internal rotation a little bit more is to slowly walk your feet out like I just did there. And from here, the same things apply, right? We're still squeezing the knees and squeezing the inner thigh muscles, but this is also gonna improve not only adduction, but internal rotation as well. And for many people, and, and myself included, uh, we work internal rotation from the lateral hip side, but we also need to focus on what's going on in the inner thigh muscles because you can't get what I'm learning a lot more is you can't get internal rotation unless you have good adduction right so this is going to target adduction when you're in internal rotation so pay attention to how this feels for you and for many people this is going to be a pretty difficult exercise some of these exercises may have been really easy for you while others may have been pretty damn hard. Spend a few weeks or even a few months trying to make the exercise easy. If it doesn't get easier after a little while, it may be worth exploring some other exercises that also target the same movement pattern. But that's really it. Keep it simple. Get better at the things you're not good at and then progress from there. To get more exercises like this, sign up for my free hip starter course. I'll drop a link to the course in the description box below. It's a great way to add on to the exercises you learned in this video, and it gives you some structure for your training. That's all for now. Good luck, enjoy the exercises, and I'll see you on the next one. Happy hips.